Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing an analysis on Poppy Playtime Chapter 4 because some new teasers that came out and a teaser trailer came out for it a few days ago. Pretty sure this is about a week ago. I'm very late to this, I know. So yeah, in this video we're just going to be analyzing and yeah, let's just get straight to the video. So the first thing we're going to be analyzing is the Chapter 4 teaser trailer for Poppy Playtime. So here we go. So basically the teaser is basically showing a dog day that's just walking around. And there's a bunch of dead toys on the ground, kind of symbolizing the end of chapter 3, I guess. There's some blood on the ground next to the pig right here. I think their name is Picky Piggy. I think. But then later in the trailer, we go to here. I can, we can see Dog Day eating a dead smiling critter. And then next to it, next to him, there's a black sheep that eats Dog Day. And there's a pool of blood. Then he dies. And yeah, it shows the black sheep. I forgot the sheep's name. Then it ends off by showing the four for chapter four. And obviously, at the end, it says it's coming out in January and it's being made by Mama Pinch. What? So one big key thing about this is that while the sheep at this frame, there are a bunch of dead toys around here. And... There are some obvious ones, like, they, obviously there's a bunch of dead smiling critters, but you can see some other characters, like, other dead toys, like, because you can see a dead, um, I forgot most of these characters' names, but you can see the green robot, I think his name's Boogie Bot, but yeah, there's a dead one right there, then there's a dead Cappy, yeah, a dead Cappy in the corner, and then there's a dead, I forgot the bunny's name. I, I genuinely forgot. Oh, right, his name's Bunzo Bunny. I forgot. And it, at this zoom out right here, you can see that there's a cage in the background. Now, what is this for? I think it's for the teasers that I'm going to be showing because it seems to be hinting at a prison. Like, like it seems to be like a prison-like area, or like, a, like a setting, which Chapter 4 is going to take place in. So maybe it's going to be like a prison for the orphans. That sounds extremely messed up. But yeah, you can see a cage. I'm not sure if that's where the toys go, if that's where the kids go, but there's a cage. And the left side, you can see a target. And this is actually in one of the teasers I'll show in a little bit. And yeah, there's like a really big target. I'm not sure what it means. I think it might be a part of a puzzle that's going to be in chapter four, because obviously Every single Poppy Playtime chapter so far has had a bunch of puzzles with one unique feature that like keeps reappearing. I think this target thing that we're seeing right here is going to be the thing that reappears over and over in the chapter. But yeah, we can see a new Nightmare Critter. Yeah, that's what they're called. They're called Nightmare Critters. And this one is called Baba Chops, I think. But yeah, I'm pretty sure the Black Sheep's name is Baba Chops and he's a part of a group called the Nightmare Critters. Which is practically the opposite of the Smiling Critters. So if I were to take a guess, they're probably like a scrapped or rejected version of the Smiling Critters. Or it could be something else that maybe they can be like the villains of the show. Because of the, from that one teaser. So that could possibly be it. I'm not really sure. And at the top there's some red. I have no clue what that means. I'm not sure if that's the red mist that Catnap makes from um, Chapter 3. I'm not sure if that's like the red mist or if that's something else. It, it could literally be anything else. I think I'm looking too much into this, but yeah, it could, it could quite literally be anything. All right, so I zoomed it out a little bit. You can see a dead PJ Pugapillar. I think there's two, actually. Yeah, there's two. But yeah, there is a lot of dead toys in this one area. A lot. So if I were to take a guess, we're probably going to be seeing a lot of dead toys in Chapter 4. We're probably going to be seeing a lot of things getting killed. We're probably going to be seeing, like, the more darker side of the factory. So it's probably going to be getting darker and darker each chapter. Well, it's already been getting darker since chapter one. But yeah, there is a lot of dead toys. I don't think we've ever seen this many dead toys in game. I, I don't really think so. Like there, that is a lot of dead toys in one area. There was like so many piles of dead smiling critters and other creatures, like other toys here that are just laying there all dead. None of them are alive. And it's kind of disturbing to look at because you know, they were all alive at some point, and they probably either starved to get death, or they either got killed by something. So if I were to take a guess, I'm going to say that they starved to death, because in Chapter 3, I think Poppy says that most of the critters ended up starving to death. I forgot, but I think somewhere in Chapter 3, 
It says that a lot of the toys ended up starving to death because there wasn't enough food, so they had to start eating each other. I think? I'm pretty sure, I don't know, I'm not really up to date with Poppy Playtime lore. It's been a while since Chapter 3 came out, so I haven't really been looking into it recently. But yeah, this might be the area where the toys keep all the dead bodies to feast on when they're hungry. So um, if I were to take a guess, this is probably like a, a feeding area for the other toys that are still alive in the factory. So the toys probably kill the other toys and then they store their bodies here for later to feed on when they get hungry. That is my guess, I could be completely wrong, but that's just my guess, so yeah. So the next thing we're going to be looking at are the bios for the new Nightmare Critters. Alright, so here is the first bio for the first Nightmare Critter, and this, and I was right for the sheep, the sheep's name is Baba Chops. So for the bio, it says, the black sheep of the bunch. Baba prefers to keep her space, like a lot of space, too much space. She can be distant, quiet, low energy, and it usually requires a lot of coaxing, I have no clue what that means, to get her out of the house. Luckily for her, she has some very persistent friends. She usually perks up after a while, but the next day, we're right back to the same tune. And her scent is Anise. What even is Anise? Alright, so I went to Google, and Anise is like a star flower thingy that has benefits, risks, and facts. Very cool. Now, I'm not really sure what the main difference is between the Nightmare Critters and the Smiling Critters. I'm not sure what what's about them that makes them so significantly different from each other. So we'll probably find out like sometime in Chapter 4. It'll probably explain why they're called the Nightmare Critters. Another thing that I noticed is that Baba Chops is wearing a skull necklace around her neck. That is very interesting. So I w it probably has some significance to her character because all the Smiling Critters are necklaces uh, kind of are affiliated with their personalities. So it kind of like synchronized with them. I don't know how to say it. So yeah, usually for the Smiling Critters, their necklace matches their personality. That's a much better way of explaining it. So, the skull might have to do something where they're enjoying killing. I'm not really sure, but they're, in Chapter 4, there probably will be an explanation on why these characters are called the Nightmare Critters, and why they're so significantly different from the Smiling Critters. Alright, the next one we have is called Icky Licky. So the bio says, Icky's the type of kid to fall behind in a rally race and immediately pin it on a sore knee, even when that's not the case. He's the very definition of a poor sport, even though he's naturally talented. He's constantly challenging everyone on absolutely everything, and usually without the outcome he expects. Don't worry, he has an excuse ready. And his scent is coffee. But you can see a radiation necklace around his neck, so he's probably a poisonous frog which is quite literally what he is. So I'm guessing Icky Licky's gonna have like a poisonous role where if you like, probably like in chapter four, if you get too close to him, you probably die. Um, if that, that's, that's my guess. So yeah, that's the design for Icky Licky. I think he looks pretty cool. So now, now time for the next critter. The next character here we have is called Alistair Gator. Kind of reminds me of Monty from FNAF. So the bio says Alistair's an all around lazy guy. He's chill, sure, but if he could, He'd spend all day in the water doing pretty much nothing. He isn't a fan of the whole put in effort and see that effort rewarded bit. He's much more of a believer of the philosophy. I said that horribly wrong. Philosophy. Good things have to come to me eventually. I just need to wait around for it. He's still waiting. And his scent is sandalwood. What is sandalwood? Alright, so this is sandalwood. I guess he smells like cinnamon. So the most notable features is that his necklace is a bone in the shape of an X, and he has very sharp teeth. So he'll probably bite you. But I think that's what they're all going to do anyway, so. Also guys, I'm not really sure if the characters' bios actually matter in-game. I think they're just there, just to be there, so like, you get like an, like an explanation on who the character is. Because I don't really think the Smiling Critters' like bios actually mattered in-game. I think it's just there just to be there, so I'm not sure if any of these have actually, like, any lore significance to them. Alright, so this next character seems to be called Raby Baby. That is a very interesting name. So, the most noticeable thing here is the necklace seems to be a blood drop. So, the, so the character seems to resemble a pink bat. And the bio says, Raby Baby couldn't keep a secret if her life depended on it. If there's one thing in the world she loves, it's gossiping. And she's very practiced at it. She has no concept of privacy or boundaries. And if she's in the room with you, you can bet she's in eavesdropping on someone. Don't worry, if she ever runs out of juicy secrets to talk about, she'll just make some up. And the sense bubblegum. 
Now, if I'm going to take a guess, if this this character is an actual enemy in Chapter 4, I'm guessing that the main mechanic is that she's going to be making a lot of noise if she ends up being like an actual enemy in the chapter. That's just my guess, though. All right, so the next character we, we have here is Simon Smoke, which is obviously a dragon. And he's wearing bling around his neck. That's pretty cool. So Simon's bio says, Simon Smoke knows he's cool and popular. And he makes sure nobody ever forgets it, whether showing off for his friends or just bragging about one of his accomplishments. It's always a popularity contest with him. Almost always, he wins. In truth, he's a colossal jerk. But does he have a knack for getting away with being one? And his sense is wood smoke. So I'm guessing he smells like a campfire. So again, I'm not really sure if the bios actually matter for the game. I th I'm not sure if they have any actual lore significance to them. I don't really remember with the smiling critters, but if anybody knows, please tell me. So the next one here we have is called Poe. Poe hates the sun and thinks it's a cruel trick of nature that the world needs it in the first place. Most comfortable in the dark, they spend their nights hanging around the gate graveyards, listening to music and feeling vaguely angry at nothing in particular. They insist it isn't a phrase. And Poe's scent is cinnamon. Very cool. So here I'm guessing that Poe is going to be an ambush enemy in Chapter 4 where he's going to be lurking in the dark and if you go in the dark, he could ambush you and kill you. That's my guess if he is an enemy in Chapter 4, like his own unique character. Because most of the silent critters were not like their own character. Besides Dog Day and Catnap, the rest of them were kind of just like common enemies. So the main thing to take away from this is that Poe is wearing a thunderstorm necklace around his neck. So I'm guessing that kind of just ties in with his goth-like personality. Alright, so the next one here we have is called Tui. This is a pretty obvious Ratatouille reference right here. Tui. It's pronounced 2E. Alright, so I got that right. That's pretty good. It's a self-proclaimed trash rodent. When he's mostly but not busy eating and collecting garbage, he's a lively conversationalist. That's a big word right there. He talks a lot, which has made all the more surprising by him having shockingly little to say. If you ever need someone to provide insightful commentary or some random piece of junk, Tui is your guy. And his scent is... Preachior. What kind of scents are these? I think it's actually pronounced Petri Chor. Petri Chor? It sounds right. Alright, time to go back to Google. Alright, so I looked it up and pe Petri Chor is the smell of rain. So it's basically that scent that you get whenever you go outside when it's raining and it has that really like earthy smell. A distinctive scent, usually described as earthy, pleasant, or sweet, produced by rainfall on very dry ground. So it's gonna be a rat that smells like rain. So the necklace around his neck is a fish bone, so Tui's gonna be like a trash rodent, basically. So maybe Tui might be in the dirty areas of the factory, like hanging out around there, and that's where he's gonna be like most dangerous. Alright, so the newest and the last nightmare critter is called Maggie Mako. So our bio says Maggie is always thinking about her belly. She's happiest with food in her mouth. And believe us, she's not picky. She loves sweets, but veggies? Yuck. Don't be surprised if she takes your health eating habits advice with a dabble of sugar, some chocolate syrup, whipped cream, and a big cherry on top, all while laughing at you profusely. And the sense is chocolate. And for her necklace, she's wearing a shark tooth. I think that's what it is. So yeah, there's the last bio for the last Nightmare Critter. You, you know, you can make what you want with it. I, I'm not really sure what else to say about these characters. But she does have sharp teeth, so she might be another enemy that you will encounter in Chapter 4. Again, they didn't really do this with the smiling critters. They weren't really their unique enemies. They were kind of just like more like common minions that would just attack you. So I'm not really sure if they're going to actually do something with these nightmare critters in chapter four. But yeah, but overall, I really like the designs of these characters. I think they're very cool. I just really am curious to what makes them so different from the smiling critters because they seem to like fit in just fine just based on looking at their bios and their character design. Out of all of these characters, I'm gonna guess Baba Chops is the leader of these Nightmare Critters. So Baba Chops is like the catnap of the Nightmare Critters because he's the one that's being promoted the most out of the rest of the Nightmare, the nightmare Critters here. All right, so now that we've got these out of the way, let's go straight to the Steam page. All right, so they're on the Steam page and this is the main key art for chapter four so far. It's, so again, it's the same character with like the glowing eyes, but apparently this isn't supposed to be the main character. So I'm not sure who it's going to be, but apparently the Nightmare Critters are going to be like the side characters for Chapter 4. So the first teaser here seems to be some kind of like security thing. I think this might be like a like a like a like a front desk, like a reception area. That is what it seems like. So at the top, you can obviously see that it's a fake like window. 
Like this, it's, it's the same thing that they did back in chapter three with the fake windows in the play care. No, it was the school. But yeah, you can see the same like fake windows thingy. You can also see that same target thing that we saw in the teaser trailer. I'm not sure what this means as of now, but it's probably going to mean something eventually. So you can see there's like gates and doors. This might be like a, like a prison, I think. I think this might be like a prison. I, th I think that might be like the main setting for chapter four. And yeah, so you can see like a bunch of computers, very old fashioned. Are those computers? I think they are. Well, whatever, but there's a desk and there's like a bunch of trails on the floor. There's a blue one, a yellow one, and a red one. So they probably all lead to their own individual areas. This might be like the main, like, headquarter area that you'll be in for Chapter 4, if I'm guessing. So again, you can see that the area looks all all dusted and old, and you, you can tell that it's like not been in commission for years. So this next area seems to be like a trash chute. You can see a vent on top. Kind of reminds me of Sister Location a little bit. So you can see that this is obviously a trash chute or like a trash room area because there's like a bunch of trash everywhere. Nothing much to make out of this, but yeah, it's a trash chute. The next one here is actually pretty interesting. So this is a sewer. I am not sure where we're going to see this in game, but yeah, from what it seems, it seems to be like a drained sewer, like an abandoned sewer. In the back, you can see a generator with a red light. I'm guessing there's going to be like a puzzle where we need to turn on this generator so it has like a green light. I That's what I'm guessing. You probably have to do something similar along the lines of that. And again, you can see that the very, the place is very old and destroyed. There's like there's like a hole in the wall. I think that leads to like a cave. That kind of looks like a cave because you can see rocks. So maybe a cave leading outside the sewer system. The next one we have here are a bunch of cells. And you can see like the, the area where you place the food that you give to like the inmates. But yeah, you can see that some of them are opened and maybe some of them escaped. Maybe there's like toys in these closed to prison cells or maybe like orphans. Who knows? You know, like, there could be literally be anything behind these cells, but yeah, there's a bunch of cells. There's also a lot of blood on the ground. I think this is blood, but yeah, so a lot of something, a lot of things must have died here. So the next user we have here, the purple hand is going to be, like, useful again. We're going to, we're going to need to use this purple hand for parkour. So this is one of the parkour areas of the chapter. And this area does take place in a cave, so maybe right outside the sewer system area? Possibly and at the bottom you can see a pair of glowing eyes or th this is either a pair of glowing eyes or a Like light source, but yeah, I'm not sure what that is And once we complete this there is a doorway that we might have to go through and we might have to move some stuff out of the way And then the last one is the main key for chapter 4 where we see Baba Chops and Poppy Playtime 4 at the top So for the about this area it says brace yourself for the darkest chapter yet in the epic Poppy Playtime saga you are pushed deeper in the undiscovered depths of Playtime Co. Factory, far below anything the world knew. Here you'll encounter terrifying new threats and discover shocking revelations. Can you outwit the natural, the unnatural new creatures lurking in the shadows? Can you survive here long enough to eventually unravel the mysteries behind the experiments? Every step will test your courage, every puzzle will test your mind, and every corner may be your last. So this is pretty obvious, we're going to be solving puzzles, running away from creatures, and it seems like it's going to be a darker version of Chapter 3. So the features here are new characters and allies. No extraordinary characters to guide your way and haunt your nightmares. So the, the nightmare critters are probably going to be some of the enemies. And then besides Kissy, Missy, and Poppy, it seems like we're going to be getting some new allies. Which is very interesting. It might be like characters that haven't gotten revealed yet. So it, we're probably going to be seeing some other toys that will get revealed when chapter 4 comes out that will ally with us and help us throughout the puzzles. Expanded lore. Discover more about the secrets of Playtime Co. and its twisted past. Heart pounding atmosphere. With haunting visuals and immersive sound design, the terror never lets up. And the last one says, will you escape the horrors within Playtime Co. or will you succumb to the terror? Survival isn't guaranteed. Fear is. So it seems like this is going to be just a generally just a scarier chapter for probably Playtime. It's going to be taking a very dark turn and it's going to be scarier than all the previous chapters we've seen so far. I am very hyped for chapter 4. I I have like a lot of hope for it. I really hope it's better than chapter 3 because I feel like there was a little too many puzzles in chapter 3. And it kind of made it a little boring at some parts. So I hope they end up fixing it for chapter 4. But yeah, overall, I'm really excited for chapter 4. I'm really hyped to see all the new characters we'll encounter. All the new enemies. And yeah... 
So yeah, guys, that's gonna be the end of this video. Thank you all for watching. I am very hyped for Poppy Playtime Chapter 4. I don't know if I'll be making any videos on it when it comes out, but maybe we'll see. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.